people say to me, well, haven't Genesis got all this footage somewhere? And the answer is no. I'm very honored to be speaking with John Edgington, who's the director of the BBC documentary on Genesis from a few years ago. And we actually talk about the origins of that documentary. We talk about the conversations he's had with the band. And we also talk about the new YouTube channel that he started, a very successful YouTube channel that has amassed over four and a half million views. It's incredible in such a short amount of time. A lot of our fans and friends in the Genesis and Phil Collins community have loved to see this raw footage from the documentary. There's so much I think you're going to enjoy from today's interview. And to celebrate this chat with John, I'm giving away one copy of his documentary, Some of the Parts, the BBC documentary on Blu-ray to one lucky winner. To be entered, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel here and subscribe to John's channel as well. And then go to everythingphilcollins.com and enter your email for a chance to win a Blu-ray copy. And we'll notify someone in a couple of weeks. Hope you enjoy the interview. I watched the documentary again this week. And let's start with Phil because... You know, that's, that's what, that's what we're about, but I I had already seen it a couple of years ago, many times actually, but I I watched it just yesterday just to kind of freshen up. One of the things I loved about it and, and and the raw videos of your YouTube channel was it, it felt like Phil was in a really good mood. Can you tell me about, um, where this was, some of the the conversations you had with Phil and and when this was and and what his demeanor was like? Um, he just seemed like really agreeable. Yeah. He was really agreeable. Um, well, it came about, I was invited to uh, direct the documentary. Um, okay. I met with Tony Smith, Mike Rutherford, and Tony Banks, uh, discussed it. And the big question was um, Phil's health, actually, at that point. Mm. And this would be uh, 2013. Okay. Sort of uh, autumn time. Um, so, you know, my uh, Tony Smith was saying, look, I'll, I'll talk to Phil about this, you know. Um, he's kind of coming out of a, a dark period, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and there was this sense in which, you know, he said he was going to retire and then was he going to come back? And, you know, it was touch and go whether he, actually he would, take part in the documentary okay so i said well i i basically spend most of my time in new york so um i said well look why don't i go and chat with them about it right mm. so that's how the initial meeting with phil came about and it's it wasn't a filmed interview it was i met uh, it, it was arranged that I, phil was amenable i met him in a Actually, the Trump Hotel, would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> On uh, Central Park West, uh, wow. where he was doing an interview. He was actually oh, doing okay. an interview about, about drumming for some young guys who were doing putting together something. Wow. Um, which might have been for a YouTube channel, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and he was, he was doing this interview, and, and he would you know, have time to have a chat with me afterwards. So I thought, well, he's up, he's up for doing interviews. I yeah, don't, that's a good point. I don't believe he was doing this officially. I think this was entirely off his own bat, you know. Right. Um, so um, he said, look, let's, let's get a coffee. We went downstairs to the hotel um, dining room, which was full, you know, and if you're going to walk <laughs> in there with Phil Collins... <laughs> <laughs> and it's full, and you just want a coffee. Uh, and he took one look, and I said, "Do you want to go somewhere else?" And uh, he said, "Why don't we go to my my apartment? It's just up the street." Wow! So we walked out, got a cab. Um, five minutes later, we were in Phil's apartment in in New York, uh, um, a very modest venue, I have to say, uh, <laughs> for you know. A, Sure. <laughs> multi-millionaire superstar. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, f- my memory is for the next three hours, Phil sat on a couch and told me about what had happened to him in the last mm. few years and, and how he'd got to this point. Uh, and how, you know, he told me about his health problems, about his back, his surgery, his, in a sense, his 
alcoholism, yeah. which he kind of accepted at that point. But sure. uh, he had been an alcoholic for at least two or three years, uh, and he was stopping it. You know, he mm-hmm. he'd been to um, rehab. He said he lasted about five days in rehab. Oh. He said his his room was next to the next to the sort of pharmacy room. And he said, you know, you wake up in the morning and these guys are all queuing up for their medication. And he said, after five days of this, I thought, I'm getting out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Too depressing for anything. Sure, I imagine. (laughs) So, uh, you know, he he was completely free uh, talking to me um, in a way that, you know, a lot of what he told me then turned up in his biography. Right. Uh, where, where he's very open and tells much of this. But at the time, yes. I was pretty amazed. I thought, you've never met me. I'm this guy yeah. who could be immediately going to, uh, you know, TMZ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, of course, the whole thing has always been based on trust with me. And that's, that's in a sense, how I get mm. good interviews. Um, right. So uh, what's, what was fascinating about that meeting, actually, that conversation, was that Phil said, look, if we're going to do a documentary, all, all of us, all five of us should meet up. Oh, really? Yeah. And I said, great. <clears throat> you know, so he said, uh, we need to get Peter, you know, Peter yeah. Gabriel. And he said, and we need to get Steve Hackett. You know? mm. And I said, great. Now, what I wish I'd said was, and what about Anthony Phillips? Yeah. Um, however, that's a digression. I'll get, I can tell you about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I said, look, this, is, this would be fantastic. And, of course, everybody would love that to be filmed. Yeah. And, and he said, well, that, that's my condition for making, pretty much for making the wow. documentary. He said, wow. Uh, Tell the guys, tell Tony Smith. I said, well, you're going to have to tell them. You know, they're not going to listen to me. <laughs> he said, yeah. okay, I'll tell them. So so we on that basis, um, the documentary was approved by Phil Collins. Amazing. Uh, very, very quickly, because this, this was early January 2014. Okay. Uh, I believe I'm pretty sure that the first interview took place by the end of January. Wow. Because I was there and I said to Phil, um, well, if everyone agrees, you know, when do you want to do this? He said, let's do it soon. You know, he said, yeah, a couple of weeks. And I said, <laughs> sure. You know, um, and I thought he's, he's really, got this great sort of um, open, honest uh, kind of sense about him right now. He seems well, ready to, do, to talk. You know? He must have been writing the book at that time then. He, he never mentioned a book hmm. to me. Um, I'm not sure that he was, actually. Yeah, I, I don't know actually when it came out. I want to. Th- I want to say maybe 2016. Yeah, I can't. Re- yeah. I can't recall. But I just wonder yeah. if that was if one of the one or the other was a, a lead into opening up a little bit at that stage of his life. I don't think he was opening. I, I don't think he was writing the book. I, th- I think okay. um, once the whole documentary come out and then he got the reactions to it, because he emailed me a few weeks after it was shown, and mm-hmm. and said, you know. Thanks so much. This is uh, I'm getting so wow. much, um, so, so many good comments from friends, you know, from family. Yeah. So it's it's really been a boost. So I think that was, you know, well, pro- maybe that propelled the book. Sure, that's interesting. This good segue because sometimes rock stars have this mysterious persona, which is often put on. Right. more often not a put on persona and intentionally elusive or a, a aloof. Yeah. And to my eyes, Phil has never done that. And in your interviews, uh, he seems so down to earth for lack of a better term. Yeah. Uh, 
self-deprecating. Uh, I mean, yep. that's one of the things I've always loved about Phil, and you see that the most yep. in the documentary, but in, in your videos. Yes. Um, I think he is who he, he's, he's the real Phil, you know, he's not the real deal. <laughs> pretend, he's not pretending. Yeah. You know, he's not the sort yeah. of public relations Phil. He's the right. guy who, if you, if you sit and chat with him, he talks he, to me, certainly he was chatting away just the same when we weren't mm. rolling the camera. I think that's him. Yeah. Uh, he's, He's very straightforward, and, and but he's the great one of the great things about him. He's got a fantastic sense of humor, which yes, you know, I managed. It came to, out a lot in yes, the in the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, there there is some incredible laugh out loud moments in the doc, and 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 also in the videos that didn't make the doc. I'm curious about your history with Genesis and with Phil um, before the documentary started, because. Um, and you do, I, you, you have, you have a great rapport with, with Phil. And in fact, in the videos, you're even teasing him a little bit. So talk, <laughs> talk to me about that setup a little bit. Well, the wonderful thing about Phil is that he completely got what I was up to because I, I have always said, you know, I always say when I'm interviewing, um, you know, rock stars, should we say, yeah. or, you know, the celebrity that um, it's no good just having me, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in coming to a kind of set up in a PR office, you yeah. know, and doing a, a quick half hour and then I'm out, you know, it's yeah. just not going to work. This is a serious, this is a documentary that's going to dig deep. Yeah. Uh, and you want it to dig deep. You don't want just the same old, that's old right. Phil stuff. Uh, and I said this to all, all the guys. Um, they responded in different ways. And you can tell by the quality of the interviews who gave me the most time. So mm. Phil gave me the most time. Wow. Phil, we got Very to the end of the two and a half to three hour first session and we'd got to um, 1980, <laughs> 1981, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he said, you know, I just realized, he said, uh, I haven't really, I haven't eaten. <laughs> and you know, he said, well, look, this, you shouldn't be put through any more of this today, you know. Yeah. Let's let's do another session. I, we'd planned that he would come to London. Uh, let's do another session when you're in London, right? Uh, and he says, yeah. He said, then we'll probably get to 1990. <laughs> and then we'll do another session. And I said, great, <laughs> let's keep going. You know, this is fantastic. Yeah. Because um, that way, the more you, you, you meet someone and the more you film them, the more at ease they become, you know, and the, yeah. these other layers come through. Yeah. Um, second session happened to be in the Dorchester Hotel in London. Okay. Uh, and Phil was in an entirely different mood. And you can tell mm. that. And that's, some of the those, well, there's some clips from that in the documentary, um, but uh, some of those um, longer set pieces are from that session. Interesting, uh, and where he's he's much more thoughtful, and he's he's kind of a more bittersweet about things, mm. and he didn't seem he seemed a little lonely, kind of. Oh wow! Very interesting. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, that was interesting too. Mm -hmm. But he, I still managed to tease him. You know, I managed to yeah. tease, tease him <laughs> about the short sticks that he played. The with. short sticks. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, about, about his son. That's yeah. funny. Um, right from the opening sequence of the documentary, you immediately highlight the juxtaposition of the Peter years and the Phil years. Right. And that's a dichotomy that a lot of fans have to decide if they're willing to accept. And, uh, you know, this artsy right. 70s prog rock, uh, then, you know, uh, with the, the, the stadium filling pop band a decade later, yeah. there's this hilarious quote in the film. Someone says, they're a progressive rock band that progressed. Fans want progressive rock bands to stop two albums into their progressing and progress no more. How did you initially plan to tackle that, uh, polarizing evolution? Um, yeah, 
I'm not sure that I did initially plan to tackle okay. it in that sense. Um, I, it, what happened was uh, once you get into the editing, uh, what a shape kind of emerged. And clearly the obvious shape is the changing sound and the changing personalities mm-hmm. of Genesis. And it was hard to do it any other way than do it chronologically right? Uh, to tell the story in any other way. I mean, it's a bit of a cliche telling the story from the beginning to the end, right. you know, but to, it's, it's such a complex story. Mm-hmm. I couldn't see any other way that would really work. Um, I have to, uh, there's a, also, I have to say that the, the film went through some very difficult periods late in the day after the f- first rough cut was was produced. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I know a lot of people who love Genesis and are fans of Genesis, especially fans of the early, you know, more progressive. Yeah. Hate the documentary. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and <Okay. laughs> uh, Steve Hackett came out and said some very critical things about how he was used in the documentary. I see. Now, um, the, the, I think it's eight or nine years later, <laughs> I, I'm quite happy to tell you the truth of the, the whole story is that the rough cut um, did not have any um, of the journalists, the comedians commenting, the writers commenting. It was purely told from in the words of Genesis. Wow. Um, it was an attempt to kind of tell it in there, you know, using the interviews, using the footage, obviously the archive, and telling it in their own words. Now, the problem with this was that it was commissioned by the BBC. Mm. And the BBC have times a very interventionist approach to that you know they they pretty much paid for it essentially wow. uh, so the <clears throat> Tony Smith uh, on his own came to the first screening of the rough cut and appeared to love it he, mm. he was very very encouraging he just sort of was great from going along the, the right lines the BBC commissioning editor, who shall not be named, <laughs> uh, came a couple of days later. And, um, I mean, the problem was that she saw Genesis as the 80s Genesis. Right. She she said it's only when you get to, um, actually, she said, which it wasn't even Genesis at all, it's only when you get to In the Air Tonight that, it, that you start to say, oh, okay, now I know where I am. You know, uh, I see. Uh, and I mean, I understand that the, when it's, it's being funded by the BBC and it's on a, me, a main channel at uh, the prime time on Saturday night, yeah, it's yeah. for an audience that doesn't really know that much about the Peter Gabriel years, right? Uh, and so she was absolutely adamant that we had to have these outsider kind of commentators yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Et cetera, mm-hmm. coming in. Um, to me, I, you know, it was a bitter pill to swallow, mm. but you know, I was high, I was a hired hand. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it turned out to be not something that in my kind of, um, you know, work as an auteur, I would hold up very highly as a, as a documentary. Uh, I, I know it's, it's, got, it's got some great moments, but what I love about putting out these, these uh, longer takes from the interviews is that the real Genesis fans have kind of really seized on them because, mm. you know, you get, you're getting, what, an hour and 15 minutes of Tony Banks talking? Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. interruptions. You know? Yeah. Um, and a quarter yeah. million people are watching it. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which That's the kind of numbers that a, 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 a NBC TV show would, would, you know, be happy with. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. I've only been doing this for just over a year. And uh, I think the uh, Genesis interviews I only started doing last uh, October. I started feeling my way wow. with them. I mean, a lot of them are, are t- taken from um, very kind of low res hard drive material, you know, that was used, the, the footage used in the edit. Right. Uh, yeah. Compressed. Not, not great. Well, uh, quality. And I've had to sort of play around and pump them up as much as I can and so on. Sure. But there you go. Let, let me just go back to what you were just talking yeah. about. And I think yeah. that problem of those eras mm. uh, and how do you tell this condensed 90 minute story uh, is, yes. this is a problem of yes. the, of Genesis forever. And, yeah. and it's a problem when they yeah. go on tour, people yeah. are never happy with their set list. Right. It's a problem when they try to put together compilations and greatest right. hits, people right. are there's, you know, so I, I think it's the, yeah, it's their cross to bear. It's really, I imagine it's really tough for them and, and in your position as well. Well, uh, what's interesting is how much they, uh, they, they, in a sense, they're in a little bit in denial about this yes. because, because they, will argue, you know, uh, th- I mean, Tony Bag says, um, no, no, there are longer, there are much longer uh, songs, you know, um, uh, in the mid to late 80s Genesis. You know, we're not, it's not all short songs. It's yeah. not all Phil yeah. love songs. And Phil will say, it's not all my love song, you know. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, you know, there's some look, the great long stuff, and they will bring back the old stuff to some degree, which is, you know, something like Carpet Crawlers is, sure. is absolutely standard in the live shows. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, and then there's the um, Phil song that he wrote about the the guys who built the, rail, the railroads. Yeah, Driving mm-hmm. the Last Spike. Yeah. 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 And, That's a long 10-minute song, yeah. But it... Of course, you can argue forever. Is that progressive rock? Is that, you know? Sure. Well, that's what was so interesting <laughs> yeah. in the interviews yeah. that I've mm-hmm. seen is that the band members seem, it seems to be a non-story for them is right. this idea right. of, of evolution. I think it was actually Tony who said something about, you just do what feels right with the people you're with in that moment. And I think I of it, you know, for them, it must be like a parent watching a kid grow up. You don't yes. notice it day to day. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Phil, Phil's attitude too, very much actually, um, and I think that the conflict with Phil has been that he became successful writing personal songs initially, yeah, very personal songs, and then um, how to fit in with Genesis and the Genesis right. audience, and mm. I think that. That's been something that's kind of haunted him a little and made him quite unpopular with, you know, the, I mean, in some of the comments on my channel, you, you can see that people are like really anti-Phil. Right. Which I find really annoying. And, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, as you I both. said to some guy today, he said, well, I said, well, you just leave off the anti-Phil stuff. You said, you know, every single... M- it's <laughs> this one guy who every single video I put up from Phil, he'll come in with his anti-Phil <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, you know, yeah. And goes, you know, Susu Studio. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, uh, you know, and he'd say, well, okay, take me down then. I was like, no, I'm not going to remove you. Free speech, but just... <laughs> <laughs> just leave well, it off. it's such leave a it. yeah. <laughs> it's such an injustice, and you would know this better. But it's such an injustice to Tony and Mike to say that Phil controlled them. I, I, yes, I just, yes, absolutely. In fact, when yeah. Phil talks, it's I think you, this comes through is that he's very beholden to Tony. Mm. So um, I think when he was talking about uh, misunderstanding. He, he talked about how he was influenced a little bit by the Beach Boys, the sound of the Beach Boys, one of sure. those tracks, and and how um, you know he'd written it as a kind of 
uh, you know, but well, still, still having, you know, it's got some piano in it. It's kind of, yeah. And he said, and Tony really loved it. Right. Mm. So you would think that that would be on face value, but no, absolutely not. Tony wants it. Tony yeah. wants it. Yeah. Tony loves it. You know, so it goes on Duke. Yeah. Um, it's not Mike wants it and loves it. It's Tony. Yeah. Good and point. I think Tony's control is one of the stories behind the Genesis. Is yeah, it's Tony's kind of sense of what's right at every stage. Hmm. Hmm. Did you get a sense? Speaking of Tony, uh, did you get a sense of tension that still might linger between Tony and Peter? Uh, there's a scene talking about the lamb. Yeah. Um, where they're both being honest, but yeah. it seemed that the water wasn't completely under the bridge. Did you get that sense at all? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Peter's, uh, you know, Peter, Peter's kind of, kind of, would kind of laugh and say, you know, what a stubborn bastard he, yeah. he, he was <laughs> and still is, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, and, and Tony, to some extent, was a little kind of rueful, you know, saying, well, you know, I know I was, but I, I think I'm better now. And, you know, <laughs> Stop beating me up, kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they, they were so kind of the closest friends at school, um, you know, in the initial kind of stages. Right. I think right. Their friendship was the, the one that was, they would probably always go back to and say that was the spark, along with, of course, with Anthony Phillips. Yeah, there's, uh, there's as you're watching and as we're describing that, those conversations in in the photographer's studio with all of them, there's moments where they all seem like they're 20 years old or 19 years old, <laughs> just picking at each other. And yeah, that's what I love about the, the raw, the zoomed out footage is yeah. just incredible to yeah. watch all of their faces react to a joke. Yeah. I, so I, interesting. I'm so, do, I'm so pleased I managed to resurrect that to some degree. I mean, yeah. I, I I would go to the file and look at it and think, this is unwatchable, you know, because mm. it's such a raw state. It's um, all from one camera. The sound, my sound is terrible because there's no, uh, we're not using, the mic sound from my from my mic is just isn't picked up on this right. one camera. That's the only footage I have of it. And People say to me, well, haven't Genesis got all this footage somewhere? And the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has it, you know. Oh, it's like, well, this is yeah. what happens. Um, these things just get binned. I'll, uh, when we yeah. talk about the YouTube channel, we'll, we'll go down that road because the raw footage is really, it's something else. And it, right. it breaks that fourth wall. And, and even right. your audio, I know people have complained about it, but I don't think they understand what we're being given. So right. to me, the lo-fi nature of it it, it, it actually complements it. It makes it more exciting, well, that's more, <laughs> more honest. So I love that. What about this rough cut? It, will that see the light of day? Sorry, which? The rough cut that you were talking about that you first oh, um, it's in, showed management. I think it's impossible um, yeah. because it's got so much. Uh, it's impossible to make it without all the copyrighted material. Oh, I understand. All okay. the archive footage. Yep. Yes, I, I understand. I mean, I came cropper with copyright last week, which uh, you know, I know, I know they're, I know they're right, but I, I think it's, it's very small-minded. Um, what I did was uh, there's a piece I put out with Phil listening to the Lamb and responding oh, yes. to it. Yep. You might, if you'd watched it in the first few days, you'll have, you'll have seen it with him listening and heard the music, right? Oh, okay. I was wondering why you yeah. uploaded a recut. Okay. So I got a copyright strike. Yep. Um, about the music. This is Phil listening to the lamb. Yeah. So I um, appealed on the grounds of fair use because okay. in this case, he's talking over it for some of the time and he's responding yes. to it. And it's it's like he's commenting, etc. Now, I don't know if it's an algorithm that then kicks in. And oh, goes, sure. Yeah. Get the <laughs> fuck off this. <laughs> but um, they uh, issued a second kind of warning and took it down. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So I now That's have a copyright strike against me. I have to be a very good boy for the next three months. So otherwise, That's right. <laughs> they'll, they, they could have the power, of course, to remove the whole, entire channel. Yeah, and yeah. they don't really, as, as special as it is, they're not necessarily Genesis fans. So they, yeah, you're exactly. one of, of a billion channels. Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So the rough cut, uh, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Apparently there's, uh, I want to ask you about something that doesn't get talked about a lot. And th- apparently there's some discord that took place between Chester and Phil at some point yes. in the last 10 years. And yes. I can't speak to that at all, but the moments where Chester uh, in the raw footage, especially is speaking about Phil yeah. and vice versa. They're yeah. really sweet moments, I really, know. really yeah. heartwarming. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just projecting, uh, but um, I, I love seeing their admiration for each other's talent. Yeah. I love, I love that too. Um, I'm afraid I was far too kind of, uh, I did not want to raise it with Chester. Yeah. Because I thought that might fair. change how he was in the interview. Mm. So I came in um, and said, you know, I just he's an incredibly friendly guy. He's very sweet. He's, he gave yeah. us a great interview. Uh and I just left it alone. I knew what had happened because I didn't ask Phil about it either, actually. Mm. I didn't want to influence him talking about yeah. Chester. Yeah. And people saying, well, why didn't you get to the bottom of it? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, in, it's in Rolling Stone. You can read it, you know. And Chester yeah. has talked about it recently. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone knows what happened because mm-hmm. it's out there. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. The story yeah. has been told. There's um, that speaking of uh, of something else sensitive. It, the, one of the things, and and maybe this um, you can speak to this from your raw your rough cut sure. was how the documentary um, omitted the Ray Wilson era and the calling all stations era. Um, yeah. a, and so you know yeah. a lot of fans I'm seeing, and not just with the documentary, but mm. a lot of fans kind of criticize the band of of being a, a little bit revisionist and mm. and mm. and. The, you know, the, the enterprise of, of Genesis kind of trying to make that era disappear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts on that? Well, I think there's a, some the power and control element in this. I mean, when you're making a, a documentary you, about um, where, where there's a, a music legends, you know, uh, they all have their own version of what, how they would like it to be mm. and um, to, re- to settle on a kind of happy medium <clears throat> I, I guess Tony Smith has had a big role to play too mm. as the manager um, yeah. but it seemed to be a generally conveyed view that if you're going to try and make this show in 90 minutes let's stick to the, the kind of um, story that it's almost like Phil never really left. Well, uh, we do have a, we do mention that he left, but you know, back again in in uh, two thousand seven, not too lo- much longer. Know, yeah, and the That's Ray fair. Wilson story just gets completely um, left out. I mean, some people think it's whitewash, <laughs> you know, but but uh, uh, there is a, there is a case there. I mean, an hour and a half, you can't tell. The story of everything. It's not a Wikipedia article <laughs> about Genesis. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's true. I mean, and the the other big bone of contention is why is Steve Hackett's solo work not included? And of course, people read into it also the way Steve yeah. is treated in the group filming. Yeah, that's just unfortunate because the it's there's one we we see one camera's shots. Steve's yeah. on the end. There are actually three cameras. One of them is covering Steve and Phil uh, and Peter the whole time. Mm. Uh, and that, if you look at the documentary, is actually cut in with Steve responding. That, right. that third camera is, is, is there. But yeah. um, unfortunately, on this central camera, which does move slightly that way now, Steve tends to get pushed off. So the conspiracy yeah. theories are all about, <laughs> aha, there you see, look at, look yes. at the way they're filming Steve. Um, 
And the Steve son, has a lot of defenders. Yeah. Yeah. His solo work is, um, the, you know, the honest truth of it is that Mike, Mike wanted more of his stuff in. Um, well, I was I was going to say the yeah. band branches out yeah. so far, yeah. and and, mm-hmm. and small creeps wasn't mentioned, and and a lot, and right. Mike and the mechanics were, mm-hmm. in some cases, almost as successful as Phil was, and and same right. with some of Peter's right. stuff, and right. there's just so right. much, right. so right. much, there's so much. Once yeah. you go down that route, um, if I'd had my way, we wouldn't have had any of the solo stuff at all. We'd have stuck straight just kept in there with yeah. Genesis, the whole yeah. the story and left out all that. Uh, um, I, I would imagine the difficulty would have been, and this is what we're talking about, trying to, to touch on every facet uh, and, and the solo albums and the singles. And, and it's not a linear story, even though you're now trying to force yourself into that. Right. So this is the, this is where the YouTube channel comes in and fill and just come and, you know, and you look at, you start to understand now what Peter Jackson, why he had an eight hour documentary <laughs> or 16 hour documentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this seems to make so much more sense. So yes. tell me about the, the Genesis of your YouTube channel, if you don't mind the pun. Um, the Genesis of my YouTube channel is um, the pandemic really. Uh, mm. And not, not being out there making documentaries, uh, obviously feeling a little frustrated. And um, one of my my daughter, who's in her thirties and is very uh, you know media savvy, she kept saying to me, "You know, Dad, you should have a YouTube channel." Mm. And my I kept saying, "Well, I, I don't know. It's like I don't really." have a lot of stuff what do i have actually um and i couldn't put out the genesis documentary because i don't yeah. own it yeah i can't put out the joe cocker film uh because it's still doing the rounds it was on netflix uh it's, i i don't ha- have the distribution rights to it sure. i don't you know the pink floyd films one of them i own but I, I gave it to a distributor, and so they're, they're distributing. You know, I can't put right. that stuff out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some old documentaries I can put out, but that's not going to grow an audience. Um, and that, it's, it's, it was an initial thing was, okay, let's, let's see. Let's try it. Let's see how we can go with this, you know. So it was very tentative. I didn't see the potential until I put up one thing that had been a DVD extra, uh, and it was a Pink Floyd documentary, uh, the the Pink Floyd and Sid Barrett story. And on Mm -hmm. the DVD, I put some lengthy selections from the interviews with David Gilmore and Roger Waters, Nick Nick, uh, Mason. And I put up the the Gilmore, which was 35 minutes long on the DVD. And suddenly I start to see the views, right? Uh, So I put up the Roger Waters one. Um, That's very quickly, I got my thousand subscribers that you need to be a YouTube partner. Yeah, to monetize, yeah. Yeah, and, (laughs) you know, we were off. And then I started to think, well, hang on. those interviews are only a selection of what I have on tape. Um, go and digitize the tapes because these are these are all interviews shot twenty years ago, and so it grew from that. So when it by the time we got to September October twenty twenty one, I had got uh, a roaring kind of success going with Pink Floyd. Mm. No, uh, the full the full. David Gilmore interview is just like several thousand views every single day for the last year. Unbelievable. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's an hour and yeah. I think it's an hour and a half, something like that. Uh, so then I, I, I sort of thought, well, what about Genesis? And that seemed a little more problematic because as I was saying, that they're, they're very compressed, low level, low res, videos and also they've got a time code running through them sure 
which is no way you can get rid of unless you resize the picture. Yeah. And it meant lopping off the top of heads and doing all mm. kinds. Of, <laughs> I, recently, I, st- I decided to try not to do that. And I put out one with Phil where you have the time code on it. Yeah. Uh, and no one seems to mind. So well, I think it adds to the, yeah, it <laughs> adds to the transparency of it. Right. I, I'd say put a fake time code on there. <laughs> it looks more behind the scenes. <laughs> well, I th- I'll ask you this. I, I thought of putting out the, um, the group session, which is at the moment it's in four parts, I think four mm. 20 minute sections. Yeah. I thought of putting it out in a, you know, slightly edited down, but maybe an hour and a half, mm. 90 minutes, but with the time code running through it, so it doesn't have the, the heads locked off. I think people might yeah. get more of a sense of the whole thing from that. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I, as a separate upload, you know. It's, no, absolutely. I, and I, I often, when I'm on your channel, I'm always worried that I've missed something. I've thought, have I seen this one? Because yeah. it, the thumbnails are from the same shoot. So mm. I'm just, I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. So yeah, absolutely. I think people would love that. Mm. W- what does this tell you about people's appetite for content yes. these days? Because, yes. you know, you're, you, you've been making these polished, finished products. Right. And, and also, how does it speak to the future of documentaries? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, well, well, my feeling about people's appetite for content is that I, you know, I always had this sense that we were selling people short. You know, mm. you're, you're doing, and, and in fact, increasingly with documentaries, you're doing sound bites. You're doing, you know, yeah. you have two sentences from someone and then jump. You do, and editors have learned to, this is the way to go with it. Um, now, you know, in the days of earlier days of like the Penny Baker film about Bob Dylan, you know, don't look back when mm-hmm. Dylan's in, yes. in 1966, you know, you would allow, he would allow long takes to run, you know, great scenes would develop, mm-hmm. you know, there's Dylan on a piano in a hotel room, you know, with Joan Byers sitting at his feet kind of thing. And yeah. it would run yeah. and, um, and then Gimme Shelter, which is about the Stones performing in Altamont, you know. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, I think what's happened is that the kind of um, rush forward, well, say NTV perhaps, has encouraged us to, you know, that when it comes to music, uh, people want, people are told maybe or shown that they, w- they want something fast moving, something that's kind of like, and got the music in it. And you can, yeah. you know. but uh, I would say, well, you're not going to dance to a documentary, you know, so why yeah. don't you just sit down and watch the damn thing? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and it's got so many layers to it, right? The music is one layer. Obviously, if you're doing this, a story of, it's got a whole set of other layers. Uh, I always feel the emotional side gets left out, you know. The, this classic album series, which is a, a series where, you know, you take an album and you tell the yep. story of it. Sure. There's often yep. been too kind of like dry and nerdy where, you know, muso, musos, as I call, can sit for hours and talk about how that that was achieved, you know, that little musical yeah. note. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, so, you know, I did this film, The Story of Wish You Were Here, the Pink Floyd album. And, um, you know, you could get totally into that from the point of view of somebody who's like obsessed with Pink Floyd's sound. But this is a story about, it's about these guys struggling at a crucial stage of their career. You know, they could have been breaking up at this point. They were... They didn't really like each other anymore. You know, <laughs> mm. there was a power struggle going on. You know, I want to get all that in. Yeah. And that's in the same with the Genesis story is that, you know, from the first moment I talked to Phil, the very first time, he would make these very wry jokes about Tony, you know? Right. You know, t- t- 
uh, he would he told the story of how he and Peter Gabriel, when Tony wasn't there, would rehearse with Peter on the drums and Phil on the piano, you know, right, and or the, Peter on the piano and Phil on the, you know, they they would play around, they would try and uh, work out something together, and Tony would come in after and go. Who's been touching the piano? Who's on it? Who was on this? <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> like, this is my territory. This is my yeah, piano. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was an or, like an organ part or something in I Know What I Like that they recorded. Yeah. That's, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and he still had this feeling about Tony for, to this day. You wow. Know? Um, you know, that, that's sort incredible. Of, that kind of um, ribbing about about that kind of thing when they got together. And, and there was a, it, you get this sense that there's a truth behind some of the humor, some of the jokes when, yes. when Tony says we wanted yeah. Phil to be successful, just yeah. not that successful. Yes, exactly. And there's a truth yeah. to it. Yes, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Which I appreciate because I think I would feel the same way. Mm. If I was a contemporary, if I had a friend who became more successful than me, we're all going to feel the same way. I mean, in a sense, they were lucky that Phil came back mm -hmm. from the point of view of the life of Genesis. Yeah. Um, I don't think calling all stations was, was, you know, going to be their kind of epitaph really. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, is, is there more Genesis content in your archives or has everything been shared? <laughs> There's always more. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, let I, me ask you this. Uh, what's next for you and and for the channel? Um, well, it's the, what I I realize is I have um, so many things I can put out. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of material that's uh, on on uh, old tapes that I need to get digitized. You know, I, yeah, I'm doing this at my own pace in a way, and right. I'm doing it at my own pace because I enjoy doing it. Right. And it's it's a nice change for me at the moment. Um, I, I've had a few people getting in touch and saying, you know, would you like to make a film about this? Would you, you know? uh, but I would not, I'm only going to say yes if it cl absolutely clicks with something I really want to make a film about more than anything. And also, if there's funding there to make it, Sure. The, the the most difficult thing ever for me in doing self funded projects is uh, you know looking at the bank balance afterwards. Yeah, right. <laughs> looking That's at, right. Yeah. So so you are you yeah. enjoying playing the role of of producer and distributor and broadcaster yes. now? And and yes. are, is have you thought about original content for for the channel? Like your stories yes. and you your your you you as an individual. Uh, yeah, I've given it some thought. I mean, I think I'd love to do that. Um, Good. Uh, you, you want to encourage me? <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> please do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, it's always fun to tell the stories behind some of these. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, the appetite for um, a, a fan of a band is infinite. That's what I, yes. I personally, I just can't get enough. And if your, if your videos were eight hours long of Phil sitting there talking, saying, I want to grab lunch, talking about his kids, you know, joking with you, uh, I would watch it all multiple times. It really does seem like, yes. and especially for a band that is seemingly over and we're not going to get new things from yes. them. Yes. The appetite is even more intensified. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think the, um, what, uh, I had I did three long interviews with Phil. The first in in his apartment in New York. The second in mm. the hotel room in London. And the third was in this small edit suite. Okay, just a little a little room that he was he'd set up and was using in 2014. Um, he was supposed to be writing songs. He said, mm. "At least that's what I tell my girlfriend." At that point, <laughs> he had, he wasn't back in Miami with his uh, yeah. ex-wife. Right. Um, and, um, and in fact, his girlfriend had encouraged him to, to get set up 
you know, to get back into writing. And I think mm. there was talk, he talked about how he'd been contacted by Adele to write a song right. for her. But that, yes, I've that, heard that, yeah. That sort of came to nothing. Um, but in that third interview, I think all the best, but there's some really great stuff. And it's all this stuff about his drumming and his voice. So I put out a, a video the other day about um, how did he manage to keep his voice going when they, at some certain point in the 80s, they were actually doing two shows a day, Genesis. Right. You know? uh, and so it's, it's just a nice piece on his voice, you know, his wis- the wisdom of how you, how you keep your voice going. But although he says at the end, I really had no idea. <laughs> I just, just not, yeah. lose, not lose my <laughs> voice. He sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was just luck, I think. Now he didn't it didn't fare so well with his body when it comes to no. his posture and his ergonomics. No. But yeah, no. the voice just must be luck because some artists yeah. will lose their voice in their thirties yeah. after what he's done. But yeah, yeah, incredible. I mean, the drumming side of it. I mean, Chester, Chester actually said that he thought the reason Phil's uh, had so many issues with his back and his shoulders was the way he sits. And the fact that he hits the hit the drum so hard, right. is, which Phil talks about being his kind yes. of <laughs> signature, his yeah, signature, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Chester could be right. I don't know. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, and more importantly, thank you for sharing all of this content. It has been incredible for us to have access to this. So, thank you so much for doing this. Well, I'm delighted that uh, you know people are finding the channel and the. You know, fans are, are getting a lot of, you know, great, great sort of, uh, you know, stories that they haven't heard before or reactions that they haven't seen. You know, yeah. at least it appears to be fresh and new to, to quite a lot of people, which is great. Well, absolutely. And, and just one more thought on just what this, what you're releasing is you were talking about documentaries about just how polished everything is and all right. of the TV appearances we would see of these artists yeah. We're just so perfect and polished. And right. to, so to see them take a, a beat to think or to make a little joke under their breath, um, <laughs> that's the magic, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed today's chat with John. What a great guy. So many cool things we uncovered. For a chance to win a Blu-ray copy of this documentary, go to everythingphilcollins.com to enter for a chance to win. Thanks so much for watching.